Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm Jane, one of the librarians at Maplewood, and welcome to uh, one of our summer reading events for families. Today it's a behind the scenes tour of Abel Baker. Um, and I want to remind you that this is the last week that you can submit your prizes for summer. Tomorrow is our finale program at 10 a.m. It's the Turtleback Zoo um, virtual tour, and you can find information on our website. And today you're going to meet Julie Pauly, the owner and creative baking mastermind of the Abel Baker. I know many of you have been there, but do you ever wonder what goes on behind the counter? How they bake so many yummy things in such a small space? Julie will be giving us a behind the scenes tour of the bakery. Now you'll all be able to ask questions and you'll type them in down at the bottom of your screen in the Q&A box. And then we'll pause every once in a while to ask Julie the questions. And please let us know who you are. Um, we're gonna have over a hundred people attending today. So we may not get to all your questions. But right now, coming to you live from the Abel Baker in Maplewood, New Jersey, it's Julie Pauly. Hi, Take it away, Julie. Hi. <laughs> nice to see everybody. It's a really hot day, so I'm hopefully you're all inside and just coming here. Uh, so we're gonna take you, I'm gonna take you on tour of the day. We're gonna start up front, and we're gonna show you a little bit about what's different now that we're um, in a pandemic. And we're gonna take you behind the scenes, back into the kitchen, behind the counter, so you can see everything that's going on. And uh, Julie, we're having a little trouble hearing you. It's a little okay. muddled. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, is that better? Yes, and better? just remember to turn on your air conditioner again. <laughs> we won't forget. So we turned it off. I told them we might be without air conditioning for a little while. So I'm going to pick up my um, screen and I'm going to reverse the camera so um, I can start taking you on a tour. So give me just a second to do that. This is my our staff, by the way, behind us. Um, if you've ever been in the bakery, you've probably seen all these drawings. And some of these folks are here and some of them are still not able to come back to work or we're not able to have enough space for them, but they're team better is what we call them. So let me get reverse. Okay. So I'm gonna start outside. So this is one of our two front doors. Can everybody hear me okay? Y yes, this, we can hear you better from this angle. Okay, yeah, okay. So this is our front door. Um, and actually, just for grins, we'll go outside and we'll see. Hi, you're on Zoom for two seconds. <laughs> so our outside looks a little different now. We have a, a table at the front door and it's curbside. So people come up to the front door. Um, they placed an order online and they give us their name and we get their order for them. So there's no more customers coming in, which is why you see the employees only sign. Um, and where we used to have a big space for customers and separate tables, we now have one big table that the staff is able to use for laying out product or I was rolling pie shells here the other day. Um, sometimes we sit here and use it as office space for working on the website. Um, there we are stacking up deliveries. Those bags are deliveries that are going to happen later today. Um, hold on, try not to wiggle too much, but I've got to close the door here. Um, and so this used to be our customer area and now it's production space, but I'll walk you over. Now we've got a rack here with all of our orders. That's Andrea. <laughs> if you've been in before, you've probably seen Andrea's smiling face. And in here, this is where customers used to line up to go to the counter. But now there's Ravina. Hi, Ravina. And so now they come to the door. That's Hannah. <laughs> um, so now customers come in. They don't come in, but we greet them at the door, hopefully as cheerfully as we used to. And we get orders assembled on this counter. The glass is gone. This is where all the pretty cookies and scones used to be. Uh, but the espresso machine is still there. 
That's Declan making a drink for someone right now. And then this is where coffee and packaging and all that other fun stuff happens. Does anybody have questions yet? I know we just started. No I questions I... yet. Okay. But the people can right type. Here's... Go ahead. I was just going to say people can type the questions into the bottom of their screen. So if we turn toward the kitchen, here are these racks full of messy stuff. So this is where when things come right out of the oven, this is where they go. And what we have up here now, you can see our apple pies. And we see Ellen here coming in with even more pies straight out of the oven. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> These are peach pies, I think. And you guys are getting a real treat because when they come out of the oven, see how they bubble? Um, we do oh, have a question. We have a question, Julie. Okay. And someone, someone asks, what time do you all start baking in the morning to be ready for the day? <laughs> so the kitchen starts at 6 a.m. right now. We used to start at 5. But now everyone in the kitchen starts at six. On really busy days, we might come in at five. Um, so maybe on a busy Saturday. But uh, four people come in at 6 a.m. and the ovens turn on and they start baking scones right away. Um, and things like cookies and pies go in a little bit later in the morning. Um, speaking of cookies, you can see we do a lot of decorated sugar cookies. I don't know what that's going to be. What is that? Oh, I know what that is. There we have ice cream sundaes. We have whales. And we have, anybody? Mickey Mouse. So cookies take several days to do. Um, so sometimes they're in various stages of being completed. Um, we also have down here, see all those loaves? That is our best-selling banana bread. So it's gluten free, dairy free, and we sell these all day long um, from the minute we open until the minute we close. Um, so I'm going to turn, I'm going to try not to turn too quickly. So if there's any tried and true, been here a long time in Maplewood, this was our original counter when our space was only half the size. Now we use it to do things like wrap banana breads, which everyone learns to do on their, I don't know, first or second day. Um, so we have a very particular way of wrapping them and we have a very particular twine you see over there on the left and a tag that we use. Uh, and Andrea is demonstrating wrapping beautifully as we speak. <laughs> okay, so let's go into the kitchen. Any questions yet? Everybody's no okay? Questions. Every, no questions right now. All right, here we go. So that's the oven to the left. And up ahead you see Ellen on your right, peeling peaches, and that's Kirsten. On your left, Kirsten is decorating cookies. And then over here, we have Katie and Rachel who are working on making scones. So why don't we go, I think we'll go to Kirsten first. So Kirsten, we, do you wanna, go ahead. We have a question here from Jessica it said, who says, does everyone mostly learn one skill and then that becomes their job? Or does everyone learn a little bit of everything? It's a good question. I think everyone learns a little bit of everything, but people definitely have their area of expertise. So and Ellen have... is our pie queen. <laughs> there she is, peeling peaches, which she does a lot of in the summer. Um, and Kirsten, what do you like to do, Kirsten? <laughs> cookies, all those beautiful decorated cookies that you've been seeing are Kirsten's baby. Um, but she's also happens to be very skilled at cakes too. So right now she's inscribing a cake for someone. I don't know if you guys can see that. There it is. And then if you want to take a peek, this is where we put all the cakes. So this is called our cake fridge. So on the weekends, it's completely packed with cakes. Um, so some of those cakes are waiting to be bought. Some have already been bought and waiting to be inscribed. So that's what we call our cake fridge. And here, I don't know if you guys can get a sense of it, but this big table is eight feet long and four feet wide. So we like to call it a bench 
And before quarantine, we used to have five or six people working at this table. Now we have two or three max. Um, but this is where a lot of action happens. You'll notice we have eggs here. We get eggs in big trays instead of small cartons like we do at the grocery store. And we compost. So the eggshells stack up and things like peels from fruit, all those things get composted and thrown into a bin at the end of the day. Um, this is Rachel coming out of the oven with some more scones. She's going to check them and make sure they're done. Oh my God, this couldn't be more perfectly timed. And there they go. <laughs> um, I also wanted to show you guys some of the how we store ingredients here. Kirsten, can you open up maybe the bin that's closest to you? See these big bins underneath? They look like big trash bins, right? But they're actually flour bins. So we have all different kinds of flour with these huge scoops. Um, and that has a big 100 pounds worth of brown sugar in it. So we keep a lot of ingredients in here. Those are, I bet those are chocolate chips. So those are going into scones. So let's take a look at what Katie's doing. So Katie's at our mixer. We have two mixers. <laughs> it's a Hobart, it's 20 quarts. Probably if you have a mixer at home, it's maybe five quarts or six quarts. Um, and what I love about it is it has a little on off. It looks like a light switch up there instead of a, a traditional switch. So she's pouring in the chips. You guys wanna see what goes on inside? There they are. Just gonna raise the handle. And then this is a very slow mix so things don't get overmixed. See how huge that paddle is? There goes the eggs and the buttermilk, probably vanilla. And if you look in the background, that's Rachel scooping out scones. This is it. I'm gonna finish mixing. When it's done, it's really heavy. <laughs> she lifts the whole bowl, comes over here, and she's gonna take all that dough and put it into a smaller bowl. And it's gonna go over to Rachel here who is scooping scones. So how many scones do you scoop a day, Rachel? Hundreds. 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 Each batch of scones we make makes about 60 scones. Um, and we're making five batches today. So that's 300 scones. Woohoo. Okay. Now so, we do have some questions. Is yeah, this yeah. A, is this a good time yeah, for questions? Yeah, yeah. We have six Six questions. Um, let's see. We have uh, someone saying, "This is Joy." I don't know if her name is Joy or this is Joy. How many pounds of butter do you use in a week? How many pounds of butter do you use in a week? Well, I'm going to scroll down here so you can see the butter that's waiting to be cut up. Um, do you think we go through twelve pieces a week now? Probably. So about 350 to 450 pounds a week. So what Rachel's doing right now is she's cutting up the butter so it'll be it'll be cut into little squares for scones. So see, see how it makes little. And then any other um, other questions, Jane, go ahead. Okay. Um, let's see. We've got quite we've got six. Someone says, how many eggs do you use in a typical day? Uh, how many eggs do we use in a day? Yes. Um, it all depends on what we're making. So a batch of banana bread uses 30 eggs. And in the beginning of the week, we'll do maybe one or two rounds. But on a Saturday, we'll do like six rounds. So it really depends on the day. So how many are in, I think there's, uh, probably about 20 dozen a day on average, right? That's a little over a case. Yeah, yeah. about 20 dozen a day right now. Used to be more, but that's 
that's the number. Um, what else do you want to know? Another question is, do staff members get to snack on the job? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's laughing. <laughs> um, so the, it's a yes and a no. So sometimes things come out of the oven and they look, the cookie is broken or it's a little bit overbaked. Um, but Ellen is showing you what everyone in the kitchen's favorite treat is, and that's something salty. So after a while, being surrounded by all this sweet stuff, most people don't really want to eat it anymore. <laughs> we do still, but not very often. Um, so that's the sprinkle of sugar going on the scones. What other questions? Um, Emma asks, why does it take several days to make your cookies? What are the steps? Ah, all right, we're gonna come over and we're gonna ask Kirsten that question. Did you hear the question? <laughs> yes. Steps for cookies. Um, well, you have to take the dough, pull the dough out, cut the dough, bake it, and then you have to outline the cookie and flood it with icing. You can do all that in one day. Yeah. But then the icing has to dry for 24 hours before you can do cheat tails. So that takes two days. Then it has to dry again. So it's a three-day process. And it's, totally worth it. and it's totally worth it. They're very cute, and they actually taste really good, which is the great surprise. So um, she's doing a beautiful job on a mocha cake right now. That's espresso butter cream. Okay, next question. Thank you, Kristen. Um, Eve Evelyn wants to know: Do you ever get to try one of those? And I'm not sure when that question came in, so it might have been around the scones. I'm not Scones sure. Cookie. Well, we make sure that everyone who works here gets a chance to try all the basics so they know what um, everything tastes like. And also, we try a new flavor. We always want to try it first before we sell it. That way, you know what's delicious. Yeah. So if we have something new uh, or we have new staff who haven't tasted things, we'll sample something so that everyone gets to know how, um, how it tastes. Oh, and Katie's sporting my favorite shirt. Turn around. <laughs> All right, other questions? Yes. We're going to Sienna, follow Katie into the walk-in, but go ahead, keep asking. Sienna, who's five, year old, five years old, asks, what is your personal favorite thing to bake? My personal favorite thing to bake? Me, personally? Well, why don't I ask, what's yours, Rachel? Um, I don't know, that's a hard question because there's so many. I like making bread when I'm not here. here. I, you know, I like baking scones. I love baking cookies. Um, this is our walk-in, by the way. So we have a big refrigerator. It's 10 by 10 feet. There you can see the floor. And this is where we store all our ingredients. So there's all those eggs you guys were asking about and more in boxes down below. And we do things like shredded zucchini. They'll prep things. We have lots of milks and buttermilks for baking and for coffees. Um, so, what other questions? Any more or did we get to everybody? No, we've got more questions. Okay. We've got a um, couple questions. One is, how do you come up with themes for your cookies? We've got that. Um, ah, so themes, um, we try to go with what's going on in the world. There's almost a holiday almost every month. And then um, there's also seasons. So for the summer, we've been doing beachy cookies. Um, this last week we ran out of themes, right, Kirsten? We ran out of themes for cookies this week. So we did a little bit of everything. We did an ice cream sundae, we did a whale, we did a sunflower. I um, can't remember what else. Last week we did all farm animals, again, because we've done a lot of summer cookie themes. Um, also, there's a big event like the Oscars. We'll do Oscar cookies. Um, or if there's an election coming up, we'll do vote cookies. Um, some holidays are more fun holidays like pie day. We'll do cookies shaped like pie slices. So good questions. What else? Joy asks a question and yes, Joy is her name. How many different shapes of cookie cutters do you have? Do you get oh. made cookie cutters? All right, I'm gonna take you over there so you can see some of the cookie cutters. Um, we've taken some of them since we, we closed for a little while when the pandemic started. So they're not all here, but 
those are cookie cutters. So we have maybe 400. This is just some of them. The rest of them are downstairs in bins. Um, but we can come over here and kind of try to, as you can tell, we have to stack them up one behind the other to make enough room. So we have lots. And sometimes people ask us for a specific shape, and then we go out and buy that one too. Okay, other questions? Yes. Yeah. Now you're seeing the dishwasher. River Dish. who's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. River who's six years old asks, how many mixing bowls do you have? <laughs> All right, so those great big ones that are right in front of you now, we have three of those, but we only have two mixers. So sometimes things are going in and out of a big mixing bowl. But then we also have mixing bowls like this and this. And then we have a huge one that you probably can't get a sense of it, but it's enormous. So I don't know, 20 maybe all together? Maybe more. Good question. We also have extra mixing paddles. There's that big paddle that goes in the mixer and the big whisk that also gets used in the mixer. Okay, what else? Let's see, we do have more questions. Um, someone says, your bakery is such a gift for people who are gluten-free. The chocolate cookies with the sprinkles are pure magic. How do you make them so chewy? How do I make them so what? Chewy. Chewy. Cookies, chewy. you mean? The uh, chocolate cookies with the sprinkles. Oh. Gluten-free. Um, it's a chewy, it has molasses in it. I think that helps with the chew. And they don't bake for very long. They only bake for about 14 minutes, seven minutes, and then we turn them around. Um, so that keeps them chewy. If we kept them in the oven longer, they get um, a little bit crispier on the edges. Good question. What else? And two other questions. One, set, one is, have you ever considered adding donuts or yeasted breads to the menu? Um, no, or yes, we've considered it and no, we can't do it. <coughs> I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's a really small kitchen. So it's hard to, um, breads require rising and proofing and space for all those things. And, um, even though there's only four bakers in here now, um, the space fills up pretty quickly. Donuts require a fryer. And we just have room for our two ovens over there, stacked on top of one another. So I don't really know where the fryer would go. I will do a plug for Palmer's though down the street. She does donuts, I think on the weekends, and they're quite tasty. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna go back in the corner here, but keep asking questions. What, though another question is, what are all the kinds of pies you make? Ah, all right, well, we're going to the right person here who's gonna tell us all about pies. So this is Ellen's little apartment. apartment. So she has everything she needs back here to whip up all kinds of pie magic. She's got to scale away everything. She's making, she's mixing together peaches for pie now. Um, she keeps her own sugar bin here so she doesn't have to share with everyone else and walk over there. <laughs> Um, so tell us what kind of pie, how many different kinds of pies do we do? Well, it's seasonal, so we change them constantly. I'd say on a weekly basis, we offer about four to six. Four to six. Yeah, last week I think there were six different kinds of pies, um, but they come and go quickly because not all the fruit is ripe at the same time. She's going to close the door on me right here and get into her freezer. Because, oh, can we see the pie shells? Yeah. Hold on. There's all the pie shells. So pie shells get made and frozen so they don't turn all wimpy in the oven right when they go in. So she pulls out the shells and then puts them here. So this week we have, what pies are you doing this week, Ellen? We're doing peach and we're doing uh, campfire pie, which is orange pie. Blueberry, blueberry pie. And maybe <laughs> All right, so if everybody on the call is super nice, we'll get key lime pie. Um, so the other thing that's back here that 
I wanted to show you all is this really marvelous piece of equipment. Uh, this is also the way down the stairs. We have storage downstairs. So this is called a sheeter. And what this allows us to do is to roll out things like pie dough or cookie dough in a perfectly uniform sheet. We didn't have this until last year. Yeah, and it's, um, it's been a lifesaver. So all that carpal tunnel that we all got from using rolling pins, we still use rolling pins, just not as much as we used to. Uh, I think it's noisy. I don't know. If you guys want to see us put it on, we will. It's just going to be noisy. What other questions do you have? We have a question that um, is, do you train your bakers or do they come from culinary programs? Ah, well, this is another question that Ellen could answer. Um, yes. yes, we do and no, we don't. <laughs> well, yes, we do both, right? So we have most, um, I think everyone in the kitchen now comes with a professional background um and or culinary school usually both um in the early days we had some people who were really and actually we have some of those now some of our best bakers are people who started out serving coffee at the counter but were enthusiastic bakers at home and slowly worked their way back here um and we have several of those just a couple of them in-house right now some have graduated and started their own baking businesses beyond uh, Abel Baker, but that's kind of neat too. Would you like to explain what Ellen is doing right now? Ooh, sure. Ellen is putting a lattice on a pie. Would you like to explain, Ellen? Sure. So it's a circle of pie dough that went through the sheeter and it's nice and thin. And the trick is to move kind of quickly because it's warm back here. And then <laughs> leave it. And then we tuck it all around so the peaches stay inside. Then we move on to the next one. So Ellen can do this with her eyes closed. In fact, usually her head is looking somewhere else all around the kitchen and she's not looking at her hands as she does this. I have a feeling she does it in her sleep. I do. <laughs> it's called nightmare. It's called nightmare. Um, so that's it. And then we give it a little stretch with a little egg wash. Where's your egg wash? All right, we'll, we'll watch the egg wash. See, now she's crimping. There's lots of different ways to crimp. But you notice how it's nice and upright? That helps keep the spilling from spilling over and going into the oven and making it a big mess. All right, other questions? She's gonna come right back with the egg wash and you guys can see her put that on. Here she is. Go ahead, Jane. I think we'll wait. It's a it's a different kind of question. Oh, okay. That's it. And then I get some sugar, and then I'm going to stick it in the freezer for a minute to get cold again before it goes in the oven. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Should we mosey back? Say goodbye to Ellen for now. I'm sure we'll see her again in a second. All right. Other questions? All right. The question is, what is your process for selecting new recipes? You have a go-to spot to look first before tweaking. Uh, no, we do not have a go-to spot. We have, um, I, you know, it all depends upon what it is. I think Ellen has pie recipes of her own. Some of them are um, kind of classics with a twist. Our, our chocolate chip cookie is based on the Toll House recipe but it's better chocolate and it has oatmeal in it and it's made a little bit differently. Um, so things get tweaked along the way, but I think sometimes you start with a magazine recipe, sometimes you start with your old joy of cooking and sometimes it's like, wow, don't you think the s'mores pie, campfire pies seemed like a great idea. And then you just kind of whip up some things to put it together. Trial and error, how's that? Anything else? Currently, no questions. All right, so we're gonna swivel up here, see what's going on up front. We got a quiet moment, I think. So Declan's doing a little bit of cleanup. Um, and it's checking out orders on the iPad. And we're bagging up things. It's kind of weird, we bag up things before the customer gets here. It used to be the other way around. 
the customer got here first and then we would bag it up. Here's all our scones for the day and cookies. So if we run out of these, we'll ask the kitchen to bake off some more. And there's our banana breads, all perfectly tied and twined. So, any other questions? Like, yes, we have the following question: Who washes the dishes? Who washes the dishes? <laughs> well, I think the answer is everybody. <laughs> Um, everyone who works here learns to wash dishes pretty early on in their career. Um, the kids, everybody in the kitchen will stop what they're doing or when they have a break between projects, they'll run over to the sink and wash some dishes or their washer as they go. Um, and at the end of the day, all these trays that have, um, you know, scones and things on them, all of those get washed as well. So could be anybody, but all of us do it. And we have another question, which is, where are all your cupcakes? I haven't seen any. <laughs> because we don't have any right now. So when, uh, now that we're on a shortened schedule, we're only open eight to two for curbside and delivery. So it's hard for us to show off cupcakes um, and make it worth our while to bake them off because cupcakes are really great the first day you bake them um, and maybe the next day but it's not something that we would want to sit around getting old. So right now we're only making cupcakes on the weekends. So you can order them, they're online, um, to be ordered in packs of six and just for Saturdays and Sundays. And we have a question from Laura who asks, is it too late for a demo of how the banana bread is wrapped? <laughs> um, it's not, I would just need to find someone. Are you free? Okay, we're going to follow Hannah, and she's going to demonstrate a banana bread wrap for us. And this will be good because Hannah has trained dozens of people on how to wrap banana bread. So we'll start here. So she gets a piece of parchment paper, and she gets a banana bread. You want to tell us what you're doing, Hannah? I'm oh, sorry. So I pull the paper in half because the banana needs to go in the middle of it. Can everybody see? Yes. Back under. Oh my God, this is perfect. Hannah's done it too. How many of these do you think you've done? <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be a thousand by now. Yeah, that's a lot. Twice around. Twice around again. And then we have a tag that has all the ingredients listed on it. Ta-da! Perfect, right? Thank you. So now you know. All right. Some more. You ready for some more questions? Yeah. One person asked, how many leftovers do you have at the end of a typical day, and what do you do with them? Um, so different things have different shelf lives. Scones, for example, are only good. They lose their crispness after the first day. So we sell scones as a day-old item. Um, so you can get them at half price the next day if we have any leftover. Um, things like a pie will get boxed up and will be great the next day. Sometimes we're baking pies right at the end of the day and they're ready first thing in the morning. Um, I guess the, the answer really is we bake everything every day except for those sugar cookies because those take a few days to finish. So banana bread, we're going to make every single morning. Um, cookies, we're going to make every morning. Um, I'll tell you one little secret. When, uh, before the pandemic, so before we closed on March 17th for a few weeks, we had cupcakes at the counter every day, which I guess at least some of you know that. Um, and cupcakes at the end of the day, if they weren't, um, if they were past their prime, we would give those to um, our neighbors in the village. So sometimes we take them to Arturo, sometimes we take them to Coda. Um, 
they're not packaged in a way that we can donate them. So we, um, we give them away to um, our neighborhood merchants. The other things can be donated, um, but it's kind of touch and go. So when we first closed, we donated a lot of leftover food to food pantries, um, as well as ingredients that we had when we had to close up. But typically we're not able to donate um, to food pantries because it's not sealed packaged product. I hope that helps. Yes, and can, may we ask a few more questions? Of course. One person asks, how about the cookies? Where do you keep those? Um, so cookies, something like the sugar cookies, right now we're bagging them individually. So they'll stay fine in this for a couple days for us, and they'll be fine at home for another week because they're sealed. Um, something like a brownie or the Julio's, in the little bags. Um, so some of it depends on packaging. Most of these cookies will be gone by the end of the day. We might have a few left over that we can package up. Um, but we bake them every morning with the intention of <laughs> selling out. What else? And another question is, how do you decide what the theme of the royal icing cookies is going to be? <laughs> depends upon the season. So, um, Probably at the end of this month, we'll start doing some back to school cookies. So we'll have pencils and school houses and school buses, things that may or may not be reality for us. I'm not sure. Uh, what do we have coming up? Labor Day, we'll do some barbecue type cookies. Um, October is Halloween, that's a big deal. November is Thanksgiving. And uh, December has Hanukkah and Christmas, so we'll do tons of dreidels and Santa Claus. And we have a question Oops, from someone seven years old. At what age can you work at Abel Baker? Uh, you have to be 16. You have to be 18 to work in the kitchen, but 16 to work up front. Um, and. Um, you can apply, although we're not hiring right now. We're always talking to people. You never know when we'll have an opening. So we ask that people send a resume to work at theablebaker.com. And we, one question I think I'm going to answer, it is, can you show us how you ice the cookies? Um, there is a video on the library's YouTube channel. So if you go to the kids page um, and look for story times, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel. Yeah, we don't have any cookies right now that we need to ice. We did some of them this morning. So I can't show you that here today, but we did do a lovely demo of that in uh, July. And it's available on the library's YouTube channel. And another question is, how do you know what colors the cakes are? Oh, like what flavors are on the inside? Uh, I'm assuming that. Probably. So um, we mark it. Um, Kirsten knows when she's making it. And actually, she has tags in that fridge that, because um, right now we're only doing a fixed number of flavor combinations. Um, so she has a tag mark on each shelf where each flavor combo goes. So, and also she decorates them so that um, one particular technique is specific for chocolate cake, and another technique is specific for vanilla. Uh, but we've done a million different things over the years. It's, it's, this is just how we're doing it right now. What else? I don't see any more questions. Well, so what are, we, wait, are we two, good for time? I, I think let's take these. There are two more questions that just came up. OK. Uh, one person asks, Oh, three questions. Let's hold the questions after that. What is usually the most popular item sold? Our best seller, uh, scones. Followed and by banana bread and right now cold brew coffee. Okay. <laughs> and, and someone asked, Julie, what began your love of baking? Pardon me? Say that again. I'm oh, sorry. What began your love of baking? Oh, um, I think like a lot of people, I liked baking with my mom at home, although we did a lot of, um, you know, she did a cake from a box, 
um, the things like cookies we would make from scratch. And I, I think when I was about 15 or 16, I decided that I didn't want to store up pie for our Thanksgiving. So I taught myself pie shell rolling and baking. Um, my first effort was not my best, <laughs> but, um, but I definitely fell in love with that process early on. So there's a few more questions coming up. Um, I'll take them in order. Any okay. change you would like to make for the Able Baker in the future? In the future? Yes. You know, it's hard to know because I don't know what the world is going to be like. Um, we, I think we're slowly learning how much more we can offer and I think we're just kind of hunkered down right now doing our best to make everybody happy. <laughs> um, next up, I don't know. Uh, and anything that we would have thought about doing, whether it be a food truck or a, I don't know, more space for more kitchen, all of that is kind of on hold while we do this pandemic thing. I'm gonna switch and go on camera. You guys can see my lovely smiling face. So bear with me. What other question? All right. Can you hear me? Yes. We have four more questions and then we'll close the questions, I think. You ready? Yeah. Okay, what are some of your other favorite bakeries in the area to visit? Oh gosh, when we travel, I, I hit every bakery we find. Um, and we are lucky to have a lot of good bakers in our town. Palmer's is right down the street. Um, Jackinson, they're closed right now, and they're a lunch breakfast spot. They make one of the bakers. Um, Cedar Ridge Bakery is down up a couple blocks and down. Um, Lip Reds is, is in Milburn. Um, so I've been to all those places, and um, and I still frequent them. And a lot of times, what's great about bakeries is even if they're doing the same thing that we are, they're doing them differently. So it's always fun to try someone else's um, take on things. And sometimes, you know, like breads or donuts. Oh my God, the bread stand. Um, we don't make croissants, but bread stand makes wonderful croissants. So I get them over there instead. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, what is your favorite cake flavor? Ooh, you know, um, just for like a, a layer cake for a birthday. My favorite currently is um, traditional yellow cake with chocolate buttercream frosting. It just looks like a homey, all American layer cake. All right, and someone so, asks, what is the least, least selling, I guess, item in your shop? Um, gosh, the, what's at the bottom of the list? Um, you know, it changes by day. We can have a day where we sell, um, you know, just a couple, a couple loaves of zucchini walnut bread, let's say, but then the next week we'll have 10 people wondering when we're going to have more. Um, uh, blah! I don't know. Maybe Julia. Um, when we were open to the public and customers were walking in, we sold a lot of what we called sample cookies. A little assorted box of six different kinds of cookies. Um, and those haven't done so well in a people who aren't taking them as gifts to places like they used to. So that might be it. Now, the, the last question is who makes the blueberry crumb cake? Which baker is the best? <laughs> um, Rachel and Katie make most of the blueberry coffee cake. We also have Karen and Francis. And, uh, they're not here today, uh, but they work on days when Rachel and Katie and Kirsten are not here, um, and they all make beautiful blueberry coffee cake. I'll let them know. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Julie.
Uh, we really enjoyed the tour. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.